Bones, skulls, skeletons. They fascinate and repulse us. People just don't really like to be involved with dead animals. But within this world is knowledge and beauty. I'm passionate about getting a pile of bones and turning it into an art piece for display. This is the world of Jay and the Villa Marettes, an ordinary family. Hey guys, can I get some help? Running a very out of the ordinary business. I think I hit the bladder. Their job, stripping dead bodies down to bare bones. Everything we do is bloody, gory, distressful. Their clients, labs, schools, and collectors of the creepy. Things like this exist in your nightmares. Animal or human, no jobs too small, too big, or too weird. <laughs> okay. And this work is not for the squeamish. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm about to throw up. That is terrible. This is Skeleton Inc. Just outside of Oklahoma City, you'll discover an amazing museum of osteology and an adjacent 7,000 square foot processing facility. It's an empire built on bones and the lifelong obsession of Jay Villamoret. I'm very passionate about what I do. I've been a collector of skulls ever since I was a little boy. When I was seven years old, I found a dog skull in the woods, and from there, I became a lifelong skull collector. Today, Jay and his two sons, Jay Jr. and Jaron, are taking in their first assignment. Of this thing, dude. Yeah, that's something else. The carcass of a Barbary lion. Beautiful mane. Look at that mane on him. Look how black that is. You don't see manes that black very often. A lot of people think what I do is strange, but uh, to find strange, what I do is uh, every day to me. Hey, guys, can I get some help? The Barbary lion, which died Let's in a nearby thing. rescue we'll facility, out. will be their museum's latest addition. We gotta get this off here. This is, come on guys, let's get him. Try to save the skin on him. Let's see if he finds ways to get him out. Let's try to get him off the table. Woo! Good golly. And it all begins with removing the hide. This is a holy grail, no doubt about it. It's not every day you get to have a Barbary lion. What do you think, Dad, close to 500 pounds? It has to be at least four or 500 pounds. Golly. That's pretty sweet, guys. The intentions for this line is not to sell it. We're gonna keep this line for the museum. This is way too special to just sell to a regular old customer. Barbary lions have been extinct in the wild for almost 100 years. Only about a dozen live in captivity today. That's a fully adult animal. Look Jay knows when dealing with such a rare species, care is critical. He wants to preserve both the bones and the lion's hide. And the elements are fighting against him. It's over 100 degrees here today, so we're up against the challenge of making sure this hide does not spoil. We don't want it to rot. I'm afraid he's so heavy, he's gonna collapse these tables. Bacteria are a constant threat to the lion's hide. Immediately after death, they begin eating away and decomposing the tissues in a process called putrefaction. In just four hours, an animal's hide will blister and discolor. The hide of this animal could be worth between four to $8,000. Most of the time, we don't save the hides. That's not what our company's about. Here, though, this Barbary lion is way too rare just to discard its hide. We will collect the hide, dry it, and send it to our taxidermist. Taxidermy is the art of preparing, stuffing, and mounting the skins of dead animals. Jay and his crew create skeletons. Everything from wild animals to human skulls. Osteology is a fancy word for the study of bones. It simply means just that, bone study or the study of bones. You look at the length of this tooth, it's equivalent to the length of my pinky finger. So it's about two inches long. That's pretty incredible. This animal, when he was hunting, he would jump up, grab on the back of the, the antelope, take its mouth and dive down into the back of its neck and it would just hold on until the animal was dead. Come on, guys, let's go ahead and get this on its back. All right. And let's commence with getting this thing spread out to be skinned. All right. I'm kind of dragging the table along with it, so we got to hold that. Okay. Right, Pull this side, Josh. Come on, grab it. Let's get it in the middle. There you go. Uh, we are going to cut down the center of his neck, straight down through the arms, 
straight down the belly until we reach the penis. From there, we're gonna go around the penis and then continue on down through, through the tail. You can slip your knife right underneath there. Jay is grooming all three of his sons to take over the business. Today, though, his eldest son, Jay Jr., is in charge. Being my eldest son, Jay has had the most experience with skinny. He has been around me, obviously, for a very long time. I've been able to teach him at a young age how to skin. He is headstrong. He wants to do things his way. I got one shot at this. I've been doing this my entire life. I was born into it. Um, my dad's trained me in just about everything I know. It's just making sure that my cuts are nice and even. And some of the things that he's trained me in, I kind of took a little further, and uh, now I have, have some stuff to teach him. I'm trying to make a straight line down the center of the body, trying not to cut into the body. I'm trying to just get the skin only so I can peel it back. And then from there, we'll just have a carcass. There's definitely a particular amount of precision needed, and Jay's good at it. A matter of fact, in some ways, I don't like to admit it, but I think Jay's better at it than myself. This is the most crucial part for me is now we're getting into the soft tissue in the belly, and uh, if I go in too deep, then I'll go into, into the guts area. A lot of fluids will come out, and then they'll just keep aiding to the bacteria that we're trying to avoid. Cutting too deep releases blood and bile from the internal organs, and that destroys the hide and its value. In most male taxidermy mounts, they'll have a full mane, they'll be an obvious male, but what they lack is the family jewels. All so often a taxidermist just cuts that away, and when they mount it, they just sew it up, and there's nothing there. What will make this hide even more valuable is the fact that we do intend on retaining the family jewels. Everything we do is bloody, gory, distressful. It's just, it's really disgusting. Uh, people just don't really like to be involved with dead animals. Oh, that's perfect. So now start pulling that foot through. Yeah, can I pull these toes straight through? Mm-hmm. Just pull them straight through. Just be careful you don't, you got to get in there and feel where you're working. At 18 years old, Jaron is the youngest son in the Villa Moret clan. Right there. No, not too far, just stay. Jaron wants to be proud. He wants to be as strong as his brother. So he has high expectations of himself because of that. No, nope, make smaller cuts. And it's very hard sometimes for him when being a little younger than his older brothers that he's not accomplishing that as fast as he wants to. Does this look all right? I don't really feel sorry for Jaron have to deal with the dirty work. I had to deal with it for a lot longer than he has to. Right. Working with family can be tough at times. I mean, we bump heads, especially when your brothers and your dad's telling you what to do. And then, but skin in the line is great, especially being real close to my dad and my brother. It, what they're teaching me is stuff I really need to learn. So, and it's great, especially with this kind of animal we're working on. And also, when you get it like this, mm -hmm. you want to put a lot of tension through that eye, through the eye hole, because then you can't hit it. You can slice all you want, but you know you're only behind the eye. If I ruin this hive, my father's not going to be happy. He left me in charge of making sure it's done right, so uh, I, I just had to do my best. It's pretty much downhill from here, isn't it? Uh, well, you got some of the gums, which can give you some trouble. Well, that's part where I'm done. Yep. Four hours into the process, Jay Jr.'s nearly completed the task of skinning the lion. Well, Jay, you about got it. Yeah. Actually, just about to take it completely off now. I had all the confidence in the world you guys could do this. He's one cut away from this going to the ground. Here we go. There we go. <sighs> Mission accomplished. Yeah. That is a skin line. Look at that. That looks amazing. Let's, Look let's lay it back up on the animal. Let's get it back up there. Look at that, guys. Yeah. This looks incredible. Coming up, the heart and the brains of this rare Barbary lion. Oh, come on. Why is there maggots? I'm about to throw up. That is terrible. <laughs> and later, maggot-infested skulls. This is disgusting. This is completely unacceptable. A 40-foot humpback whale. Here, hold it real quick. Set it down for a moment. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
an Alliance final assembly. Hey guys, what I'd like to do now is to get the uh, cables on the hands and let's go ahead and get it hoisted up. Jay Villamoret and his crew at Skulls Unlimited are anxious to complete and display their newest showcase exhibit, a rare Barbary lion. They finish skinning the lion. The next step is flensing. It's the removal of all muscle tissue and internal organs. Jay's sons Josh and Jaron get the assignment. And we're gonna hoist it up on the winch and we're gonna get it off of this table. We're gonna let gravity work with us and as we flinge the tissue off, it's gonna to fall to the ground. Got it. Woo! Okay. There we go. Who would like the uh, pleasure of opening up? I guess. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Why don't we skin some of this tissue back for we can see Let's keep it turned. Look at all the muscle right here. Look at those pecs. This animal has some serious power. Look, we haven't even reached the ribs yet. I'm following the ribs. Flensing is a form of fleshing. It's a matter of removal of the tissue. The uh, early whalers used knives that were called flensing knives. And it's just an adaptation of that word. Guided by Jay, Jaron takes a stab at cutting the lion. Uh -huh. So make sure we don't damage that, please. So we're gonna need to cut right back Are here. we at the end of the xiphoid? Yeah, okay. last ribs right here. If we make an incision right here, go deep and go straight down and don't stop until you can't go any further. If you've never been here, the first thing that's gonna happen is when you walk through the door is most likely you're gonna put your fingers on your nose. Most people do not like the smell here. It's very disgusting, it's very graphic. A matter of fact, our insurance company won't even let the public visit our workshops because they're afraid of mental anguish. <laughs> We're losing the internal organs. I think I hit the bladder. Whew. <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe the smell right now, but Pretty much worse than the sewer right now. It smells like the inside of a lion. Right now, I'm trying to get up there under, above the lungs and try to take everything out at once. So, hopefully, I can do that. Well, I don't mind sticking my hands straight up in the chest cavity and pulling out all the guts and cutting what I need to and pulling out the heart and lungs, the kidneys, whatever I gotta pull out. It doesn't bother me, really. The smell inside here isn't as bad as when you get down there. Down there where the bladder is and you get by the feces and stuff, that's when it gets real bad. This is the internal organs, from the uh, kidneys to the spleen, to, to the liver, et cetera, the stomach. Uh, it doesn't look like it did much eating before its death because it was so ill. The stomach appears to be completely empty. It kind of feels like the mixture of touching like pudding and stuff because a lot of it's really moist and just a lot, of, a lot of different feels that you can get out of this. Right now, I'm trying to get the heart, what's left of the lungs, everything like that coming out. That is huge heart. That right there is pretty remarkable. The way, it, the size of it, the way it is, just the difference in our heart compared to theirs is just remarkable, so. It's not every day you get to hold a lion's heart. I would imagine if we were to put this on the scales, it's probably gonna top out about three to three and a half pounds. The human's heart weighs less than one pound. Every slice of their blades cuts off more and more of the lion's dense muscle tissue. The skeleton begins to emerge. For Jay's middle son, Josh, this is a favorite assignment. It's pretty fun flinzing down an animal. You start to see the skeleton of it as you're going along. Uh, doing the mass tissue removal is, I think, the funnest part of the whole project, so. It may be all gory and stinky, but it's in the name of science. Uh, you know, it has to be done, and uh, the results of it is something else. This is something that we've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. This is way overdue. It's something that I'm particularly super excited about putting into our museum. 
Hey, Mom. Mom. Hi, Daddy. We're almost done here. Jay's wife, Kim, occasionally works in the adjacent office. I think having the lion here is very cool because he is the, a, a massive animal and a hard to get animal. So having him here is quite the, a proud thing for us. Jay's daughter, Shayla, is not a big fan of the family business. Disgusting. Yet. Do you want to see something special you've probably never seen before? Oh my God. <laughs> a lion's heart. You, here, you your can heart. wash your hands. I don't, no. Just hold it. You can wash your hands. Come on. <laughs> okay. Just throw it down. <laughs> Ooh, it's a little bloody. Sometimes I get embarrassed because like not all my other friends have this type of stuff. So yeah, it's kind of gross. All right, Shayla, go eat your right. go eat lunch. All right, well, let's go put this over here on the other side then. I'll eat it when you get a chance. Thanks, Mom. All right, see, all right. see you later. Bye, Bye. 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 Josh and Jaron continue flensing, removing the lion's head from its carcass. A few cuts. See how long the largest actual animal would be. It's pretty incredible. But the skull itself is particularly intricate. Dale, here's the skull from the lion today. Master flenser Dale Dorsey steps in. Dale is our master flenser. His job is to remove the tissue from the bones every day. The best part of working here is uh, definitely getting to work on uh, different in specimens like this. Uh, I am cutting the eyeball out of this socket over here. This eyeball is uh, it's a quite a bit larger than a human's eyeball. From this point, uh, I'll take it over to the uh, braining machine and uh, we'll suck the brains right out of here. This is where the neck bone connects to the skull. That's the occipital condyle on these, these two sides here. Without a doubt, the brainy machine is the most disgusting and the most re just revolting job we have in our company. Using a vacuum suction device that was designed by uh, Jay himself to uh, literally just suck the brains right out of the, the skull. I do enjoy uh, doing this. It's, a, it's not an everyday type of job. As you can see, when it goes down the tube, it sort of has a uh, strawberry milkshake quality to it. Uh, I wouldn't suggest drinking it though. Coming up, maggots wreak havoc. Two, oh, come on. That is terrible. <laughs> and beware of a falling whale. Oh man, is this sucker heavy? Yeah, I got it, I got it. The skeleton crew has been processing a rare Barbary lion for their museum. But Jay Villamoret and family also have a big business to run. Every year, the company sends 10,000 packages to medical facilities, educational institutions, and private collectors worldwide. Today, Jay's wife, Kim, assisted by her pet monkey tattoo, is shipping human skulls. When I met my husband, who wasn't my husband at the time, I was 14 years old, and to me, what he did wasn't too strange because I used to collect like deer skulls in the woods, but you know, it got a little bit stranger after that. <laughs> hey, sweetheart, how hey. you doing? Good. I've got this big order for the Forensic Science Institute going out today. Well, you so. sure do. It's a pretty good size order. This so when I went into labor with my first son, Jay was boiling skulls on the kitchen stove, and I told him that I needed to go to the hospital. And I said, well, what am I going to do? I have this boil here. She says, we got to go to the hospital. And I said, well, you're going to have to give me a few minutes to get this boil finished. And I was like, well, I don't know if I can or not. So I definitely think that time he put boiling skulls over the, the fact that I was in labor, he thought that was more important. Today, Jay and his family are still passionate and obsessed by the process they call the boil. There's maggots all over this. Jay's son Josh and nephew Joey are in charge. 
They're preparing a pile of horse parts and bison heads. It's a nasty business. This is swarming with maggots. How's the boil going, guys? Uh, it's going all right. Josh the boil works like a slow cooker. Inside this massive pot, body parts boil for 12 hours at an extremely high temperature. It's an easy way to clean most skeletons, similar to a pot roast. The flesh becomes so tender, it falls right off the bone. This is disgusting. There's maggots all over this. Why is there maggots? I don't quite understand. I don't really know. I think it was left out all weekend. This got left out for the whole weekend? Yeah. yeah. Who left it out? To no keep idea. from rotting, the specimens are kept frozen in storage. They're thawed only one day prior to the boil. Any longer, and maggots get into specimens, causing bones to become brittle, cracked, and discolored, diminishing the skeleton's value. This is a boil that got left out for too long. It was supposed to just be thawed out, but apparently somebody took it out of the freezer four, five, six days ago. And being 100 degrees outside, it's absolutely maggot infested. After a fly lays its eggs in an animal's carcass, larvae, called maggots, begin to emerge in just eight hours. They multiply even faster in hot weather. It creates a maggot mess. Now uh, the boil is one of the worst aspects of this job. Uh, you just get really dirty, the smell is horrific and uh, it's just something that no one wants to do. Well, don't slime yourself, that's, that's Josh. Josh would be more his mother's son. He doesn't like to get as dirty as we do. Even though he's the first one there when I ask him to, he's not necessarily the first one there to be volunteering. Who left it out? No idea. I'm pretty sure Jay and Jared. This is disgusting. Uh, this is beyond disgusting. This is as bad as it gets. Well, let's hurry up and get this in the boil. Yeah, there's a lot of things around here that my dad gets a little uh, pissed off about sometimes, but uh, you know, we get used to it. So strong of ammonia. I have no idea what happened. This is completely unacceptable. I know, I, I feel the same way. You're Christ, man, you know? This is not the way we actually do things around here. And it just kind of, you know, kind of irks me that, you know, I'm stuck dealing with somebody else's mistake. Joey is my nephew. When he came here looking for a job, I flat out told him, Joey, I don't think it, you have what it takes to do this job. Oh, my God. He didn't think that I could actually, you know, handle the smell here or, or just the, the grossness of the job, but it kind of proved him wrong. It's just not right, guys. You know, I expect it to be done right, and it's not. Looks like you boys got the shit end of the stick. About every time we get the shit end of the stick. The smell of the boil is uh, nothing that you can imagine. Uh, there's really no words for it. Uh, there's nothing like picking up a, a skull that's filled full of maggots, and uh, the smell of ammonia is just overwhelming. It's going to be terrible. Uh, it, it smells like a rotting death. I mean, it's maggot infested. It just burns your nose. You can almost taste it. It smells so bad. This must have been left out for two. Oh, come on. I'm about to throw up. That is terrible. <laughs> I'm just throwing that right in. Oh my God, guys. This is repulsive, it's disgusting. Oh man, there's maggots just falling everywhere. I can't even imagine what I'm gonna smell like when I go home tonight. I'm gonna have to get undressed in the garage. I'm not even gonna be allowed in the house until I shower with a water hose. This is gonna be a mess in the morning. This is just a big mess, period. There's no excuse for today. At this point, I just want to get it into the pot and get it boiled and just move on with our life. Josh, can you bring the damn hose here and let's get this thing filled up? Yeah, I got it. For sure. Now, Jay and his crew get back to the prized Barbary lion. The lion has already been skinned and flensed. It's time for the company's hungriest workers to take over. Domestic beetles. You can actually hear them devour flesh. The beetles are definitely creepy. I mean, there's been times that I go home and, you know, I have the bugs in my hair and, you know, you feel them moving around and it's just kind of gross to know that, you know, they, they'll actually travel with you at places at times. Found them in my shoes. These guys haven't had a bite to eat in a few days now. No, they look like they're really hungry. Have you seen the size of this lion skull? Wow. Look at that. a big creature right here. That's a particularly large lion skull, too. Yeah. 
Guys did a real good job flinging them down. That should be a few days before this is all bugged out. Look at that. Yeah, that's amazing. One swipe from that and he'd take your head off. Yeah, he would. Here's a few more rib bones, Joey. We're about to run out of room, so. Oh yeah, the ribs, is, we'll, we'll have enough room for the ribs here. The larva consumes the majority of the tissue. So all of these larvae, the caterpillar looking guys, those are the dermestid beetles before they actually become a beetle. With dermestid beetles, you have no chemicals involved. There's no chance of damaging the bone. Uh, there's just no cracking of the bone. It's without a doubt the ultimate way to clean bone. We originally collected ours from a dead cow about 25 years ago. They breed right here within the colonies. As long as things go well, they'll live forever. The colonies continuously reproduce. They lay their eggs here, they live and die here. The domestic beetles are the cheapest and hardest workers we have going for us. Oh yeah, they're gonna have this done just sit here in a few days. I don't think it's gonna take much more than two or three days at the most. While the flesh-eating beetles polish off the last of the Barbary lion's meat, Jay and his sons have another job. Over at the family's museum, the popular museum of osteology, they need to repair the massive centerpiece, a 40-foot humpback whale. It's got a cracked pectoral fin. The uh, humpback whale skeleton was a stranding on the beach in 2003 in Chatham, Massachusetts. Well, it took us over two years to clean the skeleton. Once the skeleton was cleaned, it took us 28 days to put the whale together. We estimate over 500 man hours have been invested in putting this humpback whale together. Now the team must quickly repair the whale's fin. It's a 200 pound falling hazard. Well, basically they decided to pick pretty much the worst day of the week to do this flipper. We know we get a lot of traffic in here on the weekends, um, and we've got all this junk in the way. You know, it could be a big problem. Guys, be really careful. This is about 200 pounds, so we don't want to come in tumbling down. Okay? Yeah. Um, that would not be a good thing. Let's just hurry you, up. You want me to get this bolt? Uh, I could probably reach it from where I'm at. This humpback whale is uh, about 2,500 pounds, and as you can see, the uh, flipper is sagging. So it's really important that we have to make these repairs and get that back up into place. Man, this is very heavy, guys. Oh my god, I don't. I got it. I got it. Okay, Press go. it on that. You're, you're good to let go. Go your way a little bit there, Jay. Rest it. There you go. Josh, you have it. Yeah, I have it. Okay. Get down and come to my side. Okay, yeah, if you come down, come around to Jay's side. I'll hand it down to you. Ready? There we go. Oh man, is this sucker heavy? All right, take it. I got it. It's sagging this way. But now but that yet, gravity. But now that it's back where it belongs, we have a crack. It goes completely around to the other side, too. Yeah. I can feel it. Yep. So we're going to have to re putty the whole thing. Guys, we only have about an hour before the museum opens up, so let's hurry up and get this done. Coming up, the crew battles a massive whale fin. The main ow, 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 ow. And the Barbary lion's bones take a dip in a burning chemical bath. It's not going to kill you. It's just going to burn you and sometimes make you wish you were dying. At Skulls Unlimited, production on the Barbary lion skeleton is right on schedule. But at their museum, they've got a whale of a problem. The centerpiece, a humpback whale, has a cracked and sagging fin. It's a hazard to anyone below. Jay Jr. and Josh need to get it repaired 
and fast. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to uh, cut out some of this putty that we have uh, so I can get down inside for uh, our new bracket that's going to go in. The crew needs to get the fragile fin back to the workshop, where Jay Jr. will build a special metal bracket. The new bracket will fit between the whale's fin bones. It'll keep it from bending, or worse yet, falling. Josh, can you give me the drill? For the Villa Moret brothers and their humpback whale, time is running out. The museum is due to open just about any minute now, and we still have a lot of work ahead of us to get it done, so I'm just trying to get this uh, finished up so I can put it back on the flipper. This repair job is taking way too long. They need to cut and weld this new bracket fast. Let's get this done. They are, they're lining up. They're out there. Now it's opening time for the museum. Visitors are going to be disappointed to see the centerpiece in total disarray. We've been open for a little while now. I was really hoping that they would have this done this morning before we opened. Uh, unfortunately not. Working as quickly as they can, Josh and Jay Jr. replace the bracket. All right. Looks good. I think we're ready. Looks like a Terminator arm now. <laughs> now the brothers can remount the fin. Come on guys, let's, let's get this finished. Let's put it on the table and then we'll putty it and then get it hung right back up there. Let's hurry up and get this done. There's already people here in the museum, so let's get her done, guys. We're up against the public. The museum is open now, and we would rather not be making a repair on the well flipper, the highlight of the entire museum, and it's down. The putty here, it simulates the actual cartilage that we have to reproduce with uh, just an epoxy. Come right here. So it actually needs to go up and over, so how are we going to accomplish that? Okay. Watch out for the stairs, be careful, okay? okay I'm gonna lift this up. Let me get up there with Jay. What we're gonna do oh, first man. is we'll get the uh, this middle one in first. Okay. Hold on, Joey. Here, hold I it real quick. Set it down for a moment. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on, I'm almost there. Okay, okay, okay. The main one. Ow, 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 ow. Just get back. Okay, I'm trying. Are you put back in place, Jack? Yeah, I'm all set over here. You know what? We did this without killing anybody. Is that still sagging? No. Good. Not at all now. Good, good, good. Guys, I think we did it. Yeah. I think we're done. Looks yeah. good. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get our equipment out and get this museum back the way it's supposed to be. Okay. With the whale back in business, Jay checks in on the dermestid beetles. The bugs have been feasting on the Barbary lion for three days. So let's see how that lion came out, Joey. Yeah, let's check this out. Yeah, it's looking really good. Wow. Look how much progress they made in such a short amount of time. So often, people think that if you hold the beetles, they're going to hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. I get asked that a lot. Little do you know, you got to be dead before they're going to affect you. These domestic beetles would not affect us at all. 
They're carrion beetles. They're beetles that feed off of dead. They prefer their meat to be dead and well dried. So even if I was dead, it's gonna be a long time before they start feeding on me. Look at that skull. That skull looks really good. I'm really impressed the way that it turned out. It's not too bad. I'm happy with it, very, very happy. From here, we take the skeleton, it's fresh from the beetles, and get it into peroxide. And hopefully in just a few days, it's gonna be ready for articulation. The crew uses high strength hydrogen peroxide to disinfect and whiten the bones. Production foreman Dave D. Williams is in charge. You got this peroxide about mixed up? It's about done. Well, when these come out, they, they hopefully, if everything goes well, they're, they're gonna be super white. Yeah, they, right now it's just a dark kind of brownish on them, so. Well, they'll be pure white when they come out. This is great, man. I can't wait to get this in the museum. Hydrogen peroxide chemically reacts with a flesh tissue enzyme called catalase. Hundreds of thousands of these reactions burn up any remaining organic tissue while releasing massive amounts of oxygen and heat. You can get peroxide all over you. Uh, what you want to do, you want to really, really be cautious of what you're doing here. It's harsh on the bones and anyone working with them. It's not acid. It's not going to kill you. It's just going to burn you and sometimes make you wish you were dying. Well, in 24 hours, this should be finished, eh? Look like it's turning white as we speak right now. It is turning white. With the day's work done, the crew will return tomorrow to begin the final stage with bright white bones. Coming up, the skeleton crew builds a ferocious 200-piece puzzle. Plus, one crew member gets a nasty burn in the name of science. This is like stabbing a needle in your finger. Here at Skulls Unlimited in Oklahoma City, an extremely rare Barbary lion has been skinned, flensed, and gnawed clean by a million hungry beetles. The skeleton has been soaking in a burning peroxide bath for 24 hours. Now it's ready to be taken out. If we get the peroxide in our eyes, uh, it's most likely going to blind us. That bone looks awesome. I don't think you could ask for a uh, cleaner, whiter bone. Look at the skull. Wow. Yeah, there's over 200 bones in a lion. So uh, we have to get every bone out. The feet bones alone will make up about 80 to 100 bones. This peroxide's awful strong, too. Yeah, it's burning my, it's burning my eyes. It's making my nose run a little bit. What about you? Yes. J and D have to be extremely careful working with this powerful chemical cocktail. I think it's in my glove right now. Really? Yeah. Well, you better do something, man. Come on. Let me check it out. Wow, this burns too. Burns like crap. Look at that. Man, you need to get that washed down. As you can see on my fingertips right here, this is a very, very strong peroxide. Almost bring a tear to your eyes how much of pain it is. Mm -hmm. Wow, just that little bit of Peroxide makes more pain than anything else. Let's get it washed down, man. That looks like that hurts like hell. That's really bad. And the fingernail's the worst you could ever expect. Oh, yeah. It's hurt. This is, this is like stabbing a needle in your finger, the burn of this. I wouldn't wish this pain on no one. I can't tell you how much pain this is, man. I can just take off my glasses and show you guys that this is really, really painful. Under the fingernail, no, don't do it. Dee's painful peroxide burn will heal in a few days. Now the lion skeleton is ready for the final stage, articulation. This is the intricate process of assembling the bones into a lifelike pose and there's no one better at it than Jay Jr. and master articulator Clark Griffith. The skull is super heavy. Oh, the bone is super dense. Nice, good bone. It's fully mature. 
It's just <clears throat> super, super heavy. No, it looks great. It's going to make a magnificent skeleton. Big this male. It is a big male. When my dad came in with the bones, it was go time. It, we've got it this far, and now the next few days are going to be intense work getting the skeleton ready for display. There's approximately 250 bones here, guys. The size of the animal okay. is going to make it a little bit challenging. The weight of it, Clean let's do spot. like one side, right? Mm -hmm. For Jay Jr. and Clark, there are three stages to articulation. First, they lay out and organize the bones. Then, for support, they drill holes and insert metal rods. Last, they use putty to simulate the skeleton's cartilage. The entire process takes 40 painstaking hours. Joey and I have been working up some poses and we kind of came to the conclusion we're going to want it in a roaring charging pose. And we'll definitely have to build the spine sturdy to hold the weight. Yeah, yeah, and it's got to last forever. Clark is a master articulator. He was trained by me 10 years ago, but he's taken it well beyond my level. You could definitely look at Jay as a mentor. He's a vast wealth of knowledge. So pretty much any question I've got, I can just go straight to Jay and he can answer it for you. You know what the most amazing part of this skeleton is? Look at the size of the skull here. This yeah. is incredible, guys. This thing could eat you. Yeah. It could totally just swallow your head <laughs> completely in one bite. Imagine the force behind this when he's clamping down. There's no escaping. You are done. That's it. Game over. This is the most amazing part of the entire skeleton. This is going to be at eye level when it's charging and the audience, children particularly, will be able to see this. Mm -hmm. And the eyes will be facing forward right into the children's face. That's the most amazing part behind this skeleton. It's going to look great. Coming up, it's showtime. The Skulls Unlimited crew unveils the rare Barbary lion. You got it? Yeah. But will the massive feline fit into the museum? Let's make sure we do this right. There's no second chances. There you go. Watch, watch, watch. Jay Villamoret and his Skulls Unlimited crew have been transforming the lifeless remains of a rare Barbary lion. So far, they've skinned, flensed, cleaned, and begun assembling its bones. Clark and Jay Jr. drill holes in each bone for support rods. Carefully assemble the lion's spine and attach the ribs. With every added bone, the big cat skeleton takes shape. Just yesterday, this thing was a pile of bones. Um, we got everything drilled up, and uh, now we have it on a temp stand, and it's actually starting to take a shape. So, you know, it's just getting more exciting, you know, every hour that we work on this. Something else, you know, we just add another piece to this puzzle. I'm passionate about the articulation because it's an art to me. I like, uh, you know, getting a pile of bones and turning it into an art piece for display. The worst case scenario could be that we don't use strong enough materials for putting the skeleton together, and it could lean, wobble, or even fall apart. Where are we at, guys? You about got it? Yeah. Yeah, all we got is left is the head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Push that on. When you get it this far, I mean, it's, it's just great because, you know, this is one of the last things to do before it actually gets in, put in the exhibit, um, and, you know, the public gets a chance to see it. All right, seven foot. Seven foot, guys, that's incredible. It's magnificent. But they're not finished yet. Tomorrow, they need to safely get this invaluable treasure into the museum without breaking it. The museum has over 30 feline specimens, but this Barbary lion will be the biggest cat of them all. 
up to the tail. Is the tail low enough? Yeah, you're yeah. good right yeah. now. Yep, you're low, low enough low. now. You got it. You got it. You got it. Good, good. How's this beam look? No, you're all right. There's a lot of things that could go wrong, and we want to be careful that that doesn't happen. Careful, guys. Don't drop it now. We could absolutely drop it. We could hit the tail on the ceiling. There you go. Watch, watch, watch. We happen to hit a doorway or something that we damaged the skeleton right before we put it into the exhibit. So then we have to go back and you know spend the time to fix it just to get back to where we just were. Good, about there. Good, 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 good. Good. Yeah. Josh. Yeah. Josh, do you mind getting inside and help in case the glass was to drop back on us? You can kind of help support things. The glass is extremely fragile. If it drops, it could shatter into a million pieces, ruining the lion, the exhibit, and injuring the crew. Everything has to come out at the same time. They both have to be on the same page for the whole thing. If not, then that glass is going to explode. OK, Joey, let's make sure we do this right. There's no second chances. Watch the corner. I'm as ready as I'll think I'll ever be. There's always worry that skeletons won't fit in, and this lion's no different. He's so large, uh, he's over just over seven feet long. If he doesn't fit in, we're gonna have some troubles. Okay, easy, easy, easy. Very nice. Very good, careful. Okay, I watch that tail. And the foot, the foot, the foot. foot. There we go. Crawling into the back of the exhibit, there's uh, not very much room. I'm pressed up against the wall, but I'm also pressed up against these other fragile skeletons. No, no. That's I good. think we can come back forward now. Okay. The lion skeleton doesn't fit inside the exhibit like we want it. We're going to have to take it back across the street and uh, change the position. Come forward about six inches. OK, right about there. Very good. Any closer, his nose will be against the glass. This is awesome, because now kids can get, they'll be right at eye level. It's so incredible. It's so fierce. It's been back-breaking, stomach-turning work. Each crew member has poured in their heart and soul. They've transformed a lifeless lion into a work of art that will live forever. And now, it's ready for the world. It's just a big accomplishment. You know, you don't, it's not every day you get to articulate a lion skeleton. So to you know, have that privilege and finally get on display, it's a rewarding sound. You want to call in the staff and let them see what you've done? Yeah, yeah definitely. Let's get everybody in here. Hey guys, you want to come see this? Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're see, yeah. Good. What you think, bub? Yeah, that's yeah. great. What you think? Looks good. Yeah. You did a great job skinning and flensing. Good job, did. Jay. Jay, awesome work. <laughs> D, we're proud of you. That's what I did. Well, it looks really good in here. Everybody did a great job on this. You, just the sheer size of this compared to everything else is terrific. Proud of everybody. Yeah. I can tell my friends that I held the heart of the lion. It was definitely a messy job getting it here, but now it looks great. It's really clean and uh, it looks great in the exhibit. The uh, thrill of this job, it never goes away. If it does, it's time to retire, but I'm not sure that'll ever happen. I'm sure I one day will become a specimen here in my own museum. <laughs>